In the late 1980s, at a festival which was meant to bring Americans and Germans together, an airshow ended in horrific disaster as three military aircraft jets collided into each other during their performance. In mere seconds, the planes went down, one of them crashing into the audience of over 300,000 people. The already controversial airshow had now claimed lives of over 70 people and injuring countless more. After the horrific crash, a multitude of critical failures came to light, not only about the crash itself, but the handling of the rescue and evacuation operation that followed. But what exactly happened that day? Let's talk about it. This is the infamous Ramstein Airshow disaster. Forty or so years after World War II, much of the world was divided between NATO in the West and the Soviet-formed Warsaw Pact. Germany was split, with East Germany joining the Warsaw Pact and West Germany joining NATO. Because of this, various soldiers from different NATO alliance countries were stationed in West Germany, British, French, Italian and Americans being the majority. One of the largest US Air Force bases outside the United States was the Ramstein Air Base, located in Ramstein, Miesenbach. This was controversial, as many Germans didn't want a US Air Base on their doorstep, so in order to keep the peace, they would host a festival on the Air Base each year. This was in the form of an exciting air show, and was intended to bring Americans and Germans closer to each other. The first show was in the 1950s, and by the late 1980s, hundreds of thousands of visitors would visit the Air Base to view the air show. The 1988 event took place on August the 28th, the weather was hot and sunny, and over 300,000 people attended, ready to see the show. Most of these were German and American, but people would come from all over the globe to see the event. It was packed, and the first stretch of the day went as planned. Visitors would walk around the airbase to look at aircrafts on display. These included Royal Air Force Harriers, the infamous B-52 bomber, a T-33 jet trainer, and much, much more. The flight display began at 12.30. Again, each performance went as planned, and at 3.40pm, the last team set off to perform their famous pierced heart formation to close off the show. The team behind this exciting maneuver were the Italian tricolored arrows, known in Italy as the Fricce Tricolori. These are the aerobatic display teams for the Italian Air Force, and they were introduced in 1961. The Frecce Tricolori is the largest aerobatic team in the world and are known for their impressive dynamic performances and back in the 1980s, one of the most impressive acts from the team was the Pierced Heart. The Pierced Heart maneuver involves a formation of aircrafts flying towards each other. As they converge, one aircraft, positioned at the centre, breaks away, creating a heart-shaped opening, hence the name Pierced Heart. The trick took 10 people, who split into groups of four and five. Then, a solo flyer would break off. On this occasion, the group were flying the Air Machi MB339, a fighter jet produced in 1978. This is a tricky maneuver, but the pilots were experienced and had done it countless times before. This didn't mean the maneuver didn't garner criticism. Before the event, many had expressed their concerns claiming the trick should be banned. Nevertheless, the group set off and split into two sets of four and five, whilst the solo flyer flew through the middle. Ivo Nutarelli was the solo pilot, flying Aircraft Pony 10. He was very experienced in the field, with over 4,000 flight hours logged, and loved performing for a crowd. However, that day, Nutarelli split off too early and low. Within mere seconds, Nutarelli collided into the cockpit of the lead plane, known as Pony 1, piloted by Mario Naldini. This caused Pony 1 to lose control and crash into another plane known as Pony 2, piloted by Giorgio Alessio. The initial crash killed Nutarelli instantly in the air. Giorgio died on impact also, but Naldini managed to eject out of his aircraft. All the crowd could do was watch on in horror. Nutarelli's aircraft was now plummeting towards the ground, close to where the audience was standing. Once making impact with the ground, the plane which was now a huge fireball tumbled its way onto the runway towards the audience. Many had no time to react and were killed instantly. The sky rained with fire and debris, hitting the crowd who were now running frantically from the crash site. One of the audience members said, 
When the Italians flew their pierced hearts, I just turned around. I still said to Carmen, look, but my wife did not even have time to turn around completely. I saw fire and debris. It was only until one of the planes flew directly towards us that I realized the danger. That was not a show anymore. I shouted, run. But Carmen only looked at me wide-eyed, as if to say, there's no time anymore. She only brought a chopped oar over her lips, while she was struck by a large piece of debris on her head, which bent unnaturally forward. That was the last thing I saw of her. The plane continued to destroy everything in its path, and would have killed many more if it didn't hit a parked up truck which halted it in its path. The remaining seven planes quickly regrouped and landed safely nearby. Once over, the rescue mission had to begin, but there were only a handful of medically trained German forces on site who tended to the injured there. However, the American forces chose a different strategy, which has since been heavily criticized. The American soldiers loaded the injured into trucks and buses to send them to nearby hospitals, rather than treating them at the airbase. This was criticized as many believed on-site injury assessment and first aid would have saved more lives. This would have meant victims would have been sent to appropriate hospitals depending on their injuries. There were delays in getting victims to the hospitals, and the only rescue helicopter had been destroyed in the crash. The US military also did not let German ambulances onto the airbase straight away, as the incident happened to be on an American base. One German doctor said, We found a variety of severely burned, severely injured patients who were completely untreated. 70 people were killed either in the crash or waiting for rescue. 31 of these died on impact, with 28 of them being struck by debris. 16 died in hospital from burns and the rest died waiting for rescue on the airbase. A further 500 people were injured. The rescue failure on behalf of the US military has been blamed by many for the high number of deaths. One doctor even went on to say, we were constantly looking for burned patients who were torn from our hands by the Americans and evacuated completely untreated. Once all the injured were evacuated, an investigation was launched. The crash garnered massive media attention and military air shows were immediately banned. The investigation was concluded quickly due to the staggering amount of video and picture evidence from the witnesses present that day. It was clear Nutarelli's aircraft, the solo pilot, came in too low crossing the other planes. Due to the speed he was going, he was unable to correct this and collided into the lead plane, which then spiralled into the third plane that was affected. The lead plane crashed into the rescue helicopter whilst the other plane landed over the runway. Nutarelli's aircraft careened out of control, crashing into the audience. The whole crash took place in several seconds, which is why some of the audience was unable to escape. In short, it was pilot error that caused this disaster. One investigator said, basically all display maneuvers at the air shows are planned, with precisely defined radar and speeds down to the smallest detail, including a safety margin. The Frecce Tricolore pilots belonged and still belonged to the absolute elite of Italian military pilots. However, despite intensive preparation and training flights, something can always happen, just like in Ramstein. Although the US military initially claimed that the rescue had been handled very well, it was clear this wasn't the case. Rescuers lacked direction and equipment to help the injured, and mismanagement led to further deaths. I still think it's important to note that most of the rescuers did all they could for the victims, and many survived because of this. There were many protests afterwards, but it is believed that due to the relationship with NATO, not much more was done. Survivors recovered in more than 40 hospitals across Germany, but some never fully recovered from their injuries. Many today still don't talk about what happened, and suffered terribly with post-traumatic stress disorder. After the incident, a memorial stone was placed inside the airbase, however, there was no public access to said stone, much to the dismay of the victims' families. For years, the families of the victims fought for a new memorial site, which was eventually granted in 1994. This was located out the airbase and available for public access. May all the victims rest in peace, and I hope the survivors have managed to recover as well as they can. As always, this is not an AI channel, I do everything myself, and if you appreciate my work, subscribe, and if you want to go the extra step to support the channel, maybe consider becoming a member. This was definitely a harder one to make. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.